Hey everyone and welcome to another Planet Zoo console tutorial. Today we are not going to look uh, three hours into this game like we did in the last uh, couple uh, tutorials I did. Today we are going to look specifically into the wonderful pathing. And you now had about two weeks with this game and potentially you are as frustrated as many other people when they first came to a planet game and experienced the wonderful pathing. But fear not, we are going to solve some of your issues and some of the most frequently uh, occurring frustrations. Trust me. Today we are going to go through it. If you want to know all the basics about this game, I highly recommend my all-in-one tutorial where we are going to cover most of the things um, that you may worry about. However, let's start with the wonderful terrain building. And, uh, not terrain, sorry, pathing. I'm, I'm already confused. I just look down in the menu and whatever. Now, let's go into the path menu. That's the first thing you do and I do believe you have already opened it. If not, just press A or X, depends on which console you're on. I'm on uh, Xbox, but obviously this works the exact same way on any other console you're playing on, well, depending on you know, PlayStation and Xbox X or S. Now, you can see to the right-hand side, there's the path editor. And first of all, before we do anything, let's quickly go through the editor. Now, you have the choice of different path elements. Um, that means different textures. There are a lot of textures in this game. We have some solids, we have some uh, invisible stuff. We have some natural graph pathing, for example. We've come some volcanic rock path. Um, it's also kind of funny that you have all the pathings already that are uh, tucked to the DLCs without even having the DLCs, but hey, whatever. I'm, I'm quite happy for you that you have everything. Now, going down to angle snap, this is obviously the one function you can expect um, to build with either angle snap on or off. This is the same as in every other menu. You can switch between the lengths and then, you know, every piece you build down over here, you can see uh, becomes longer and if you reduce the length it's going back if you increase the width over here You can see your path becomes wider and the same goes down You can go all the way from 4 to 10 meter and you can change the camera from follow and rotate to follow um, So for example follow and rotate would mean that your camera rotates uh, as you build so as you can see it's a bit odd to be honest It feels almost like on a roller coaster um, <clears throat> Anyways, as always, you can also redo undo by holding down X or circle and then uh, put your uh, D-pad to the left and your redo undo button is activated. Now, you can obviously change this. I'm going to keep it to follow and we're going to go over here all the way back to the standard pathings. Um, if you press one of the shoulder buttons, the upper shoulder buttons, you switch between these sub menus over here. Now, you can obviously go from path to settings and there are a lot of settings in here. However, I'm going to quickly explain them to you because most of them are very simple to explain and we don't even need to go everything in detail. Now flattened terrain does exactly what you expect it to do. It always flattens the terrain to your pathing. So let's say you have like a little bit of a ditch somewhere for example like it's a bit more hilly over here and if I were to put it from here it would flatten everything out all the way across to the other side. This is what the function does. Um, if you have tunneling enabled, it will always get rid of every terrain around you. I can quickly sh show that to you. So if I put it down now, you can see the terrain is actually getting destructed. If we turn that off, you can see we are going back to the land pieces. And if we undo all the settings, you can see your terrain is back in action. Path support means if you are on a raised area of a path, if you have supports or not, because if you want to build your own supports, you can turn them off. I would highly recommend keeping them on on. And that's the easiest way to go. And then you have also curved slopes. Now in this game you can also build a staircase leading up. And if you build the staircase leading up, that means that you can uh, go either straight, which would happen right now because we have the curved slope, uh, slopes de deactivated. If you do activate that, you can actually also make rectangle, uh, like circle path uh, over here. As you can see, there is like a circular little staircase going up that hill. So this is where you can do this. And then curb means this very ugly thing over here, as you can see, the yellowish thing to the outline. But if you turn that off, it basically looks like if we s uh, fly all the way over here, there you go. You can see this part over here doesn't really have a curb on the outside. So it's just going straight into the texture of the ground. The railing on ground Q means if you build a Q for any of your rides, you can decide if you want to have a railing or not. Just to be sure, railing is what you can see over here. This path over here has a curb. This is the lower kind of uh, you know, whatever wooden uh, barrier to it. And then the uh, railing is the upper one, as you can potentially tell. And this goes all the way if you go through here. Now, the only thing we need to um, 
talk about is the snap alongside barrier. This is a function if you want to build something along a barrier, as you can see over here, the game automatically snaps to it as soon as you do it. Not sure why it doesn't do it over here. I think, you, yeah, you just need to build one and then it just snaps along the barrier and you can just keep on building and the game will automatically snap along the barrier, which I think is easy to understand once you've got it. I'm going to turn that off because I don't like this kind of, you know, um, little experiment of having something going towards to you. You've maybe already seen what I'm doing over here, but more about that in a second. If we go to the use the T junction when you're joining a path, this is very interesting. So if that is off, I'm going to quickly show that to you, you will see that the path will join at any given angle. You know, that is a bit of a nice thing to have. But if you turn that on, it'll automatically create a 90 degree angle in this little corner down here. You can see that very nicely. Um, this is now forming a 90 degree angle if you want to. And if you connect, you can see that. If we turn that off, it's going to create a more like natural looking one. This 90 degree angle sometimes can be hel helpful if you want to have certain elements coming together nicely. And then you can do this. But, you know, I rarely use that. So I recommend having that on off. And the elevated length is something we are going to talk about in a second, but I need to go back here in a second. Now, um, the queue, as I talked about, is a normal pathway with the little difference that you can actually go down to two meters in width and you can also go up to four meters in width. It's a little bit smaller, but this is a queue section for your people to wait um, if they want to go, for example, into a viewing dome or in any of the rides you can build in this game. Um, the rest is pretty much the same. The staff path works exactly the same as the uh, as the normal path. However, it is a path for only your staff members, so the guests won't go onto your path. However, um, there are rare occasions that, for example, protesters will use the staff path to get to a certain area if there is an animal that requires um, a lot of attention because it's in whatever reason, um, you know, made the protesters come in the first place. Or sometimes people glitch through if there's, for, for example, something like this, and then all of a sudden you have like a normal path. Like if it's just a something like this, you know, this kind of pill, sometimes they just glitch over it. So if you want to use the path, um, always ensure that you make like a bigger staff path anyways, because this will help to actually ensure that they really do not go there. And the last but not least is delete the path. However, you don't really need that um, unless you need to delete a section way after you've built it, because if if so, you can uh, just delete it with undo, as I've shown you in a second ago. Now, um, what you can always do with the pathing, as in any other area of the console edition, which is the single most best function of this game, is you can enter the radial menu. And some of the things are available to you at the beginning. But now, as you know all about the settings, we will now build a couple of things just to show you how it works. So first thing first, I'm going to deactivate the angle snap because it just kind of annoys me. Now, um, we are first of all going to build a pretty normal meandering path through this section. Just nothing, nothing too crazy, okay? I'm just gonna build like a little path over here and then what we're going to do over here is we're going to build like a wonderful, uh, you know, staircase over to the other side. Now, as you can see over here, there are a couple of options we have. Now, first of all, we can select one of these things over here. As you can see, flatten terrain on, or we can say curved slopes on, we can say angle snap on, uh, but we don't wanna have angle snap at the moment. Select grid is something we are going to talk about in a second, or you can actually delete the last section. Um, However, while I can uh, figure out, I would, should actually pause the game right over here because I figure that all the animals are dying in the background. I shouldn't have animals dying. So, um, but now we want to go up, you know, and this is where the X key comes in place. Um, uh, you, you just basically hold X and then you can snap it upwards, as you can see over here. Just snap it once up and then you have a like kind of slope and if you snap it once up again you have a staircase but as you can tell it looks kind of odd doesn't it so what we're going to do we re release the key actually and now it stays on this height but what we want to do is we want to have a curved slope activated and now you can actually see that we are forming the ramp and we can now rotate this is what i meant a second ago and you could either go and make some more roundish areas, but we, we just don't want that, you know? So once we have this part over here, you can see that this is nice, but we want to go over the bridge. So what we got to do is we are going to build actually a higher slope. So I'm gonna press X again and snap it higher once more. And then we actually have a staircase and we're gonna do it that way. And then once you're up again, we are snapping it down twice. Actually, 
We're gonna leave it like this first of all to make it a bit more of a flatter nice area and then we just bring it all the way over to the other side once we're happy we just hold down x again snap it down and um, one thing i figured which is a little bit of an odd thing but you have to be very careful while snapping down so once you hold down x or circle right now you are not allowed to move your mini stick too much you just flick it down okay just t flick it because if you move it too much the game just kind of starts to do odd things so um i'm not sure why that is but uh, just a little tip from my side so once you've done that you can see oh this is this is nice we are making like a little infinite uh, logo over here but we messed up on the right hand side with the roundish uh, appearance of this this just doesn't really look nice does it so what we can do to make it look nicer obviously we can bring our angle snap back on because that will always help us to build a nice and tidy round rotation but you can see over here this seems to be a little bit too little so we're gonna make the whole rotation a little bit further with 15 degrees and so hopefully 15 degrees will help us and make this a better rotation let's see if that is better one and two one two I just want to try to make this uh, a little bit nicer. There you go. That's a little bit nicer, but we could make the last one even better. So, and now you can figure out something is odd and the game will try to connect over here. And this sometimes can be very annoying, you know? Once you flick it over here, you don't want to connect, yeah? You just want to go somewhere else, for example. What you can do is you just see the settings button down to the very left of the upper level button uh, highlighters. If you hold that down or just click that one, you can build free now and the game wouldn't let you connect or it just doesn't try to connect and this time around you can actually go and create the path like this for example and then if you want to connect this area here again you just press that button again and then the game automatically creates that connection for you again so we're gonna keep it this way because this is something very nice okay sweet that looks kind of cool but what i want to have now is i want to have a plaza in between those two areas because i feel like plazas are something we all like okay so I'm going to go to, pl to pass again and my plaza should go through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click once and twice. Now you've built this and this would be a nice connection but now you would start to paint this all out. You don't need to. Just hold down your radial menu and then you go select the grid. Because the grid selection means that any given piece you select will bring up this wonderful bluish highlighted grid as you can tell. And on this grid you will be able to build a plaza. So you can basically start over here select this one and build a plaza. As you can see, this will always go in these tiles now. But there is also one cool function, and that is square edges. And this means you basically create a square plaza over here. And this is exactly what we're going to do. I'm just gonna paint in the field, as you can see, just very nicely, creating like a, a very nice plaza, making that go up here again. There you go. Once you're done, press B once, and you're back in the normal building menu. And we can just connect this stuff over here. Sweet, that looks fantastic, doesn't it? Okay, cool, this is done, very nice, very cool. But you can also obviously build this on a raised terrain, which is a uh, raised area, I should say. Now, if you hold down over here or over our bridge we did, also, by the way, let me just show you, um, it is, it, the game lets you do that on inclines too, but it won't work because now the game will let me put it somewhere over here but it doesn't connect to a path as you can obviously tell it just creates a grid but the grid doesn't really do anything so you should actually make sure that you have some space around this and you are on level like that means on a perfectly horizontal piece of path um, on the ground though you can be a little bit hilly but not too much because then it will start to look very odd indeed now if we choose that one over here you can see we are starting to paint out a little plaza over here and this time around i didn't choose to go for square edges but what i figure is the raised area could actually get some railings shouldn't we get to some railing well actually let's do this now um we go and say railing on elevated on and now we just highlight the path we had just once more and then we are getting to some railings over here. Look, that is nice, right? And then we can also bring this down to the other side. But as we are in the in the grid area now, on the in the grid um, editing, you can't do this. So press B once, and now it also lets you uh, adjust that on all the other path 
pieces. Very simple, very intuitive once you know it. So that is very much like this. One thing that does annoy me though over this staircase is it's super heavy and super high, right? These pieces are insane. What if we just want to build like a super, super, super tiny raised area? So for example, Let's imagine this is a habitat, okay? And you want to have like a little bit of a raised area that is over here. So let's first of all go back into our path menu and create a nice little raised area. So first things I want to do is I don't want to connect to the path over here. So I press the button we just learned a couple of seconds ago once more. And now what I'm going to do is I'm hold down X or circle, bring it up a little, just a little. Check this out. This is, this is fine. This is pretty okay. And I'm going to put this down here. And I'm gonna create this roundish area like this. And I'm gonna keep angle snap activated and then go all the way around until it lets connect me. Well, it doesn't because I disabled it. So now let's enable that again. And we have this wonderful, perfect area. Nice. And now we want to connect this down here with the path. Now there are several options to do so. First of all, there is a very good trick. And this is um, if the angle snap is activated, sometimes it's harder to connect. So. For those automatic connections you want to do between these two areas, always disable the angle snap. You can either do this here or just uh, do this with um, the angle snap option via the radial menu, which is the one thing I would highly recommend. Now what you need to do is you create this connection point over here, just press and then the game automatically looks for the closest path to connect. That looks fine, doesn't it? You can't really move much more. Now this is the sole connection the game figures out for you. And now this staircase is a little bit nicer. However, if you do not want this, you can basically just undo your action and maybe put that a bit more to this side over here, first of all. And now you can see the game is not doing it. Okay, well, what if we want to have like a bit of a nice connection between these two areas? You would now figure out to go down once like this, right? And then we click and then the game just can't connect because it's a bit it's a bit of a, a bit of a weird thing so we're gonna go back again and you would try to find a connection now like this once you have made this one connection piece the game again will automatically try to connect this look and then we have this wonderful uh, incline over here looks nice right this is like a bit of a better one not too crazy but there is an even better option to do that you can actually go and one thing i want to do now is i'm going to disable the path joining option because i want to disable this for a second and we go into the settings menu all the way down to this option called elevated length off we are going to say elevated length on and we're going to the smallest of these options. Now, I'm going to show you why we do this. I'm going to go back to path so it automatically lets me connect this one. And if I now hold down the key, oops, um, I should definitely also uh, go back to pathing and then just select once. And once you have selected this and you hold down your X or circle key again and you flick down once, you will, oh, wait, I forgot to enable this again sorry that was my bad because i jumped out of it I'm just gonna enable that again and boom there you go look at how short that piece now became so you can actually change the length of the piece that is being your incline or decline um honestly this is so freaking cool because now you get the control to build with this thing and you can also and if you have the curved slopes on you can even become a little bit like build a nice little curve. I think I just turned it off. So let's turn it on again. There you go. You can now build your own little curve. As you can see, there you go. And you can obviously, if you want to make that a staircase, you can flick it down once more and it becomes even steeper. And there's a little trick to make your areas look nice. So if I want to go steeper like this, just press one and then hold down again, flick it up actually three times until you have a piece like this and then flick it again twice and a third time so this way and i'm going to show you why i did this i'm going to flick this once more up and from now on i'm going to search for the ground let's see that we can do this and hopefully connect to the path there you go that's a sweet connection and once this is done this looks kind of nice doesn't it well, we need to do something and this is we're going to figure out what to delete and I want to delete exactly this in the middle. I'm going to show you why and just point to this little bump in the middle you just created and then press your Y key, which is delete and oh wait, I forgot to. Well, actually, uh, let's just go back twice. There you go. And I'm going to press B again and now go back into the path menu. So that is just so we haven't got anything uh, selected. And now if you hold over here, that should 
delete the middle path. There you go. And as you can see, the game again wants to try to smooth out the area between these two areas. And I'm just going to delete the key, uh, the uh, stair key over here as well. Just hit again. And now you've created your custom ramp, which is even longer and even nicer because you have had the control yourself with these little pieces. And this way you can um, always make use of the auto connect feature in the game. So this way you have more control, you can build shorter segments and which I think is the coolest feature of them all, you can finally make some very gentle slopes if you need them because in all honesty, the in-game slopes are well, kind of mad, uh, to be honest. Like, the stairs are steep and the slopes are also way too steep. So, building around this like this with a little trick is super helpful. Yeah, that's that's just how you do that. Now, there's one last thing I want to show you. Actually, two last things. Um, I'm going to show you the little party trick that everyone is using. Because if you have seen something now, all these paths we build, they look okay, don't they? But they don't really look great, do they? However, you can do some cool things with a bug. This bug has appeared first in the Planet Coaster Alpha stages. Um, and in this time, people figure out if you click a connection like this, like for example, just figure out in, in between somewhere, you know, like a little connection like this, and you don't keep on building, but you delete the last pass you did with the delete key, the whole game smooths out the segment, as you can see. Have you seen disappearing? Well, I'm just gonna undo this so you guys can see that again. I'm gonna redo. Look, this is this is what happened. And this works by simply using your path and then find an area that you don't like. So for example, this one over here doesn't look too good, does it? Uh, but I think I wanna first of all do this side. So just search for the connector piece and then you click. But this is important, this is the important bit now. You don't build any further, you don't undo it, you basically just delete it with your Y or the triangle key and then the game flattens that out. Do the same over here, do it again and it's wonderfully flattened out. Now it creates like a new connection in between which you could either flatten out or just leave the way it is. I like it actually how it looks. It's very it's very smooth and nicely painted. I really do like the flow of the path but I don't like this flow of this little edge over here so I'm gonna go back to path search for this little corner and see if I can smooth it out. Well, it appears that I can't smooth this out. Sometimes it doesn't work. You have to be a little careful. Sometimes it, oh, wait, it, it works. Like, look at that and delete it. Boom, there you go. Perfectly smooth down path. And you can do this in most areas, not all. Sometimes you just need to find a perfect uh, piece for that and then just build it, delete it and uh, so on and so forth. Sometimes you just need to, you know, be a bit more cautious and sometimes it won't work and then you just need to use your um, undo feature. Well, there's one little kind of trick. This it doesn't really belong in this, but this is just like a tiny little add-on from my side now. Um, if you want to build a connection between those two areas, let's say you want to straighten that out as well between these two. With these tools over here, it is a little bit hard because your connection will always look like this and then you try to do it like that. And this looks kind of odd, doesn't it? So what you can do is disable the path joining function. So you can put a piece right exactly where you want those two to go through and then plop it down. And from over here, point this into any direction you like and then activate the joining function again. So here you go. Just search for the perfect me joint as you will. And then you just go over to the other side and you do the exact same thing again. Just search for the perfect, there you go. And you have your perfect straight connection between those two areas. That's a lot easier than just, you know, trying to figure out how to connect the path with each other. But as promised, there's one last thing. One thing I just found out a couple months ago, so really not that long ago. So therefore we need to edit the terrain really quickly a little. Um, so if you want to know how to edit terrain, you can basically check this out in my uh, long tutorial because that is something we did in there too. But I'm going to use actually the uh, terrain and I'm going to say subtract terrain and can I just quickly rotate this? Um, let's see. I'm just going to rotate the whole thing a little so it's a bit more. Whoops. Flick it around. Yeah, that should be fine. Just move it very close to the pathway. Somewhere over here should be fine. There you go. So this is nice, right? And what we're going to do now is we're going to build a little plaza down here. I'm going to show you why in a second. Um, so we are going to basically, first of all, just go to the terrain tool again. 
and I need to have the no, flatten. Uh, it's not in here. Why is it not in here? I need to flatten to surface. There you go. Flatten to foundation, I mean. So there you go. Flatten that all the way to this path over there. That is sweet. And now we go back to the pathing. Path I'm going to create, like, as I said, we are going to create a little plaza just over here to the other side. I think this is fine. Just bring this one around. It's very important that you create a small plaza. You don't need to do anything big. It's super it it's super unnecessary to create something big. Just make sure it is a it, it just needs to be a plaza, okay? Um, or actually those three should be enough too. Can I put another one there? Yeah, I can. That should be all the way good. Let's see if I can put another one there. You can also delete these things later on if you want to. Sometimes you don't need to. So this is fine. What you need to do now is create a connector piece over here like this. But then don't build it. Just press B and go away because you need to like it's very important that you leave this piece. As you can see, there's this tiny little connection. And if I come closer, it auto connects. OK, and we want to do the exact same thing over here at the top. And sometimes it doesn't work because the terrain isn't nicely enough. And then you need to go back to the terrain menu and also flatten to foundation. Also, you can reduce the size uh, quite a lot. All right, so I think we are going to build the plaza a little bit further back to see if that will help us this time. I think I, I was just a little bit too close. This is why uh, certain things didn't work out. But what I want to do now is I'm going to build a little grid. And as we have flattened to um, the ground enabled, we are now able to build a little bit of a bigger plaza down here. And it'll automatically create ourselves what we need. Um, and this time around, I also want to ensure that, and this is why I'm going to go all the way over here, um, I have the straight connection over here. So as you can see um, here, there we have the connector piece. There it is. And I want to go all the way to this one down here. So you can see there is something I can place. I'm just going to place it all the way here. And now what I want to do is I want to make sure that those two automatically create a connection. And therefore, I need to ensure that we have flattened terrain turned on. Uh, tunneling doesn't really help us over here, but uh, flattened terrain has to be on. And now if I go and go here for the length, usually the game, there we have it, should create a connection. And you can also play around with the uh, length of the pieces. Sometimes it's a bit better, sometimes it's a bit weak. But over here, as it creates this automatic connection, you can now press A and boom, it creates this automatic flattened terrain option. This doesn't look particularly nice because it's a little bit too short so you would need to play around a little bit more with the path here. Um, that was just like quick and dirty from my side. If you place those two pieces better together and nicer enough and I mean also it's kind of a steep hole uh, not gonna lie. So if you you know take more than one second for it like I did over here you can do something very cool like this where there is like a very natural nice looking ramp going all the way down and just enjoy um, how smooth it is. <clears throat> the reason why I'm so happy about this function is, <clears throat> and specifically on console, also by the way, I've got terrible pollen allergy, which means I have uh, like a little bit of an ick here in the voice, but I, you know, whatever, it's fine. Um, never mind. You can do these things and then you have a connection and specifically on console, building with terrain and pathing and paths is very tricky. So this comes in handy if you want to have a nice connection via terrain. I mean, you could easily just delete this path now and, you know, smooth out the terrain and bring it down again. Um, but I would say most of the times this is the better connection than just trying this yourself. Um, and if you don't put it that deep into a pit like I did, um, it's looking a lot better by default anyways. However, this has been it guys with my path tutorial i really hope you guys enjoyed this one i really hope you guys enjoyed making uh, sure that you have a yeah well hopefully better experience now in uh in using the path system in this game because um yeah most of the times uh we have to admit it's not the most simple tool ever in a game and it's also not the most uh intuitive one but again as i said hopefully this helped you out and i really hope that you are going to enjoy your console experience just as much as we did on computer it looks good it feels good there are a lot of things to iron out but some of the first patches have already seen some good improvements so hopefully frontier is continuing on that and i really hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial there's a lot of other tutorials on my channel especially now uh, for some recent tutorials for console but also how to get inspiration and stuff like that so check them out 
I want to see you over there. Thank you so much for watching as always. And if you haven't subbed to the channel and you are all in for content like this, more tutorials, more builds, more inspiration, make sure to leave that little click on the red button to uh, follow this channel and make ourselves uh, go to 90k subscribers on this channel, which is a super nice milestone we hopefully reach within this year. So thank you so much as always for the support. Have a good one and goodbye.